The mythology of Polaroid has long been told in photographic history. A spectacular invention protected by patents and lawsuits and a war with Kodak. So how then did a third party company manage to rise to such popularity, gaining notoriety well after the instant film ship had sailed? Today, we're talking about the history of Instax. Let's get it. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. What up all you instant shooters, looters, and freebooters? Just a heads up, I'm on the Analog Talk podcast this week. We talk instant cameras, we talk being a human being, or like right now, which is kind of nuts. Uh, just go ahead and check it out at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everywhere podcasts are sold, and I'll see you there, or, or like hear you there. I'll just go listen. Welcome to In An Instant, my name is Ben, and today we're going to break down the unorthodox history of Fujifilm's foray into instant photography. This is a weird chain of events, and obviously it starts with Polaroid. Edwin Land's company had long prided itself in its glorious patents, protecting themselves from any competition by keeping a tight lid on their technology. This worked for, I don't know, about 40 years until 1976, when Kodak boorishly burst into the instant film industry without any regard to the legal implications. Kodak's got the instant camera you've been waiting for. Instant color photographs, that's what the handle's for. Oh, that's gonna be a no for me. Big time no. Despite collaborating with Polaroid's manufacturing team for many years, Kodak saw the market was just too delicious to let Edwin Land's small squad continue to rake cash without competition. They thought, well, we're the big bad wolf. We'll just blow your little Cambridge, Massachusetts house down. In one of the most iconic patent lawsuits in US history, Polaroid fought back. And after a 10 fucking year battle, they won. Kodak immediately ceased making their instant film products and everything was in its right place. Or was it? Over in Japan, something else was going down. Kodak was so confident in themselves that they not only continued to produce their products during the lawsuit, but they also roped Fujifilm in on the charade. In the middle of the lawsuit, they licensed their technology to Fuji who introduced their first instant film system, the Photorama, in 1981. You may have noticed Fuji's Instax film is exposed from the back, unlike Polaroids, which are exposed from the front. This is only because that's how Kodak tried to get around Polaroid's patents. So now this lawsuit is raging on and Fuji's like, oh shit, what the fuck did we just get ourselves into? But here's the amazing part. Instead of entering another messy international lawsuit, Polaroid tried their best to get savvy. They saw the video cassette revolution was in full swing, but were so far behind on the wave that they saw an opportunity with Fuji. The two struck a deal. Fuji can continue making instant film, while Polaroid now had access to Fuji's wide-ranging electronic technology. This is why you see so many random Polaroid VHS tapes. It was the result of this deal. The other major aspect to this was that Fuji was kept at bay through the 90s and early 2000s, with their products remaining largely in Japan only. In 1998, they debuted the brand we all know today, the Instax series. Starting with the Mini and the Wide, only a few of the cameras in film even made its way in international markets. Instead, Polaroid and Fujifilm collaborated on a camera for the American market, which straight up bombed. The Polaroid Mio, which took Instax Mini film branded as Polaroid film. I mean, you just can't make this stuff up, that's so weird. Anyway, fast forward to 2008, the darkest year. Polaroid has nosedived and closed up shop, ceasing production of instant film. Now the patient folks at Fuji finally pounce, exporting tons of Instax minis into the US retail market. By late 2009, the new mini cameras and a new wide camera are on store shelves and gaining a niche following. Eight years after that, they debut the Instax Square. At this point, just like not giving a shit about how similar it looks to a Polaroid. That same year, 2017, the name Polaroid Originals, now simply Polaroid, returned and the one-time monopoly now ironically tries to play catch up to the brand which kind of sort of stole their original patents vis-a-vis -vis Kodak. The Instax series has been widely successful. They sell over a million cameras per month and that's not to mention the film itself which is an ongoing revenue stream which has overtaken their flagship digital cameras by quite a lot. Fuji's timing and branding really couldn't have been better. They hit a crest of nostalgia for analog products right as the world started digging back into vinyl records, retro fashion, film, bell-bottom jeans, boots with the fur. Like everyone's got an Instax Mini, it's just a fun thing to have around. You see it at weddings, parties, they're a colorful taste of the past without breaking the bank. 
They did what the original Polaroid company couldn't survive long enough to do. And now that Polaroid's back, we'll see how long these two can duke it out. The more the merrier. Thank you for watching In An Instant. Go ahead and sue that subscribe button spawning a third party competitor. Stay tuned for more reviews, breakdowns, and all things instant.